I'm Tom. And I'm Molly. Welcome to Forensic Gameology, hosted by ForensicGameology.com. Reviews for science. In seven minutes or less. Now, because this is an RPG, we if you're seeing this, you're either subscribed to us or you're on RPGGeek.com. Hello, this is the first time I've ever posted here. Hi. Uh, or somebody shared this with you, and I appreciate that, whoever you are. And I think you should do more of that. Little Wizards is an RPG for children. Although I haven't actually played it with children, I've only played it with amongst five adults. So, <laughs> so I mean, for it's all for well, adults alike, like, children. for kids and adults alike, <laughs> and it's 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 very simplified. There, uh, and you know, let's just go right on into it. Um, simplicity versus complexity. Well, as far as RPGs go, I'm not the most experienced to know. I've played one other RPG that is way more complicated than this. So I would say this is very simple. Uh, as far as a game goes, there's a little bit more to it. If we're going to compare this or any RPG to a board game, right? You've got to create a character and you've got to go through all these characteristics. There's a little bit of setup, but then it's just storytelling and gameplay. And so I would say it's really simple. And that that that's it, simple. And the die rolls, and there's not much complexity in attacking. If there, you could say attacking, there's not really attacking as much as things that you have to do checks and stuff, and those are just really simple. You just roll two dice. There's not nothing complicated about it. I think this is a pretty simple RPG. You create your character. You're a little wizard or a little witch, a mage or a sorcerer or a sorceress. Uh, whether or not you were you choosing your character if you were born with magic or if you study magic or if uh, you have different traits, spell casting, divination, conjuring. And then amongst all of your different skills and traits and powers, you assign good, better, and best. Good is just a die roll. Better is plus one to modify any die roll, and best is plus two. You only have one of each of those in any given uh, set of skills, for instance, body, brain, and heart, or conjuring, room writing, spell casting, things like that. You, you assign whether or not you're the best at it of your own personal set, and so you get, you get some, it's all written on the papers in your set, you're fine. So it's, I'd say it's pretty simple. As I was the the game master and the narrator, and so I found it to be pretty simple as well. I did the pre-set stories. There are three of them. And I ran through a couple of those, and I seemed to do a fine with it. It was I think it's if someone was even new to role-playing games on either side as a player or a narrator, I think they could read the book and definitely pick it up and be able to play. Luck versus strategy. Uh, the strategy is all in what you can come up with, right? How you can create solutions. Like we had someone was falling and we had to do something about it and someone had a butterfly net and so they we enlarged the butterfly net with spell casting to catch this person, right? So, and it worked. Had it not worked, we would have had to come up with something else. To, or to the person out. would have fallen to their death. No, I doubt that would have happened in this book. I, I'm the, I'm the, the narrator. You were this close. Whatever. Either way, there's it's, your imagination is your strategy. And then the luck comes in when you roll the dice. We had so many rolls of very low numbers, and we needed like a seven. Seven is the most commonly rolled number, supposedly. But I, I think our average last night was two and three. Two. Not two, three. But we were so many threes rolled. So there is luck in that. Again, what are you going to do with that? That's all part of the fun, though. I'm good jumping ahead of myself, but then you have to, cause you have to narrate what happens. You narrate your failures, narrate your successes. So it's the strategy is what can you come up with to do? So it being a role playing game, it's cooperative and I'm not really playing against the players. I'm trying to facilitate the story. I don't know if there's much luck or strategy. Of course there's die rolling, but double six is, am I right? Super Ooh, luck, so really much good. luck. However, the thing is, is that in this game, you're not really supposed to allow the players to fail. They didn't know that. <laughs> But that's why you kept going, even though, like, the story kept going without uh, without much pause. Like, when they couldn't get a boat to cross an ocean. Yeah, it was rough. They, they, they did all these things wrong, and I was like, oh, while you were casting the spell, <laughs> you noticed somebody embarking on a boat, and you could probably go work for them across yeah. the way. So, it's like, so you're not allowed to let them fail, really. And so they fail, and there's a narrative element to that, but the story will continue. You're not supposed to just stop and be like, okay, you're done. And so... I don't know that there's a lot of room for luck or strategy here. Really, it's all about the fun. And luckily, fun versus boring is what we're about to be in right now. I think this was a lot of fun. Uh, there's no permanent death, nor is there any combat, nor are there any hit points or wounds. 
So I made some up. And uh, <laughs> you didn't know, I didn't did you? Even know. I have wounds written on our papers. Yeah, so it's for little kids, right? And so just to up the ante, I was like, I'm not going to tell you what your hit points are. I'm just going to tell you you have wounds. And so yeah, they, they, they were scared wounds. and they were trying to avoid frostbite. They were, <laughs> it was a whole thing. Oh, I didn't even know this guy. So, so there's a lot of fun. You, it's anything goes. It's, it's a role playing game. They give you a very good structure, a really cool world, coin world, where you're on heads or tails. And it's a flat world, and they've got archipelagos, and so you're constantly in islands and whatnot. I'm taking up too much of Molly's time. I'm going to say super fun. I really enjoyed this. As a player, it was, it was really enjoyable. And I can really see kids enjoying it. What age group? I don't know, because I enjoyed it, and I'm definitely saying, not a we kid. We wouldn't know. We didn't so, play with anyone that was a kid. But, but super enjoyable, super fun and creative. Just really fun uh, to get into characters. To I had a troll tooth as my belonging. I was excited to use that for some adventure. Who knows what I would have done with it? Ooh, the familiars. I, I had a familiar. Everyone has a familiar that's black, and uh, that that was very important that it, that it be black. But it's on the book. But a familiar is an animal. Yeah, we have an animal with us that, that we can kind of communicate with, and just super fun and imaginative. So if you have a little kid, this is this would be great to try out with them, I think. So, I don't know if RPG Geek has the same thing, but on the Board Game Geek rating system, I'd give this a 10 out of 10. As would I. So, yeah. Little Wizards. We've presented the evidence. You be the judge. <laughs>